Okay, this is chapter 22. The book God dictated to me, Isaiah 53, in the day of the Lord. Just as he dictated the Torah to Moses, as the Orthodox Jews believe. And I would uh, think one of the main reasons is because he couldn't have had that knowledge. You know, I mean, he was raised in Egypt. And now uh, the Jewish people have derived 613 laws from those first five books of the Hebrew Bible. And he just couldn't know. And, you know, Leviticus, those are laws from God with purpose. And uh, this is a new set. This will be the third time I've uh, put the book to video. God has me repost them all the time. And they uh, suffer wear and tear real quick. Um, but it takes a long time to upload them to YouTube. I can only get about six half hour videos. Uh, and that's all my memory card. Uh, I can put 10 to 12 to 14 videos, half hours, on this memory card. But for some reason, it stops at 30 minutes and I got to reset it. So you get a lot of parts one, parts two. <clears throat> this is a long chapter. This is Isaiah 53 with the primary goal of showing how Jesus does not fit any of the verses, save one. Uh, and that would be verse 12 where he's counted a sinner because he's, he lies. He lies in the New Testament. There's, there's a solid 10 of them, which uh, you can find on different videos. And we may get into it here at the end. But because it's so long, oh, and actually God wrote all the books of the prophets too. He dictated to Isaiah, Isaiah, write this down. Command, his command and direction, all the books of the prophets. And probably had them uh, write the writings, you know, like Chronicles, etc. Uh, Ezra, Nehemiah, or I guess they could have written their own, just like the prophets. David may have written the three books he's in. I mean, he doesn't specifically tell me. I mean, I'm just saying what he wants me to say right now. He controls what I'm thinking and what I say. He controls my physical body by the cords of his power, which you can find in the book of Ezekiel. It doesn't really feel like cords to me. To me, I'm just enveloped in his power. Can't seem to get into the middle here. It's okay. All right. Chapter 22. Are we going to keep that title? God's righteous servant versus Jesus. Righteous servant Moshiach versus Jesus in Isaiah 53. The first speakers of Isaiah 53 are the witnesses of the righteous servant. In the quoted multiple verse, verses 1 through 6, the quote begins verse 1, ends at the end of verse 6. It just, it just means the people who start out say, saying, who can we believe, uh, who can believe what we have heard? Uh, and, and, and such verses that include, he was wounded for our sins or guilt was uh, placed upon him. All that's going to be explained. And Ezekiel is the key to understanding 53. Verse 1, oh, the many who are made righteous by God's righteous servant. Those are the first speakers. Who can believe what we have heard? Upon whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Who can believe what we have heard? Midrash form. Breaking this verse down and then commenting on the different uh, parts. Now this actually starts in Isaiah 52 verses 13 through 15, which are also in quotes. 
beginning at 13, ending at the end of 15. And in there, you have statements such as, um, we see what we had never heard by the Gentiles, the kings, the nations, silenced by, by what they're seeing or hearing. Verse, okay, who can believe what we have heard? The witnesses ask, who can believe? That these are the things that, that they just can't believe, that they're saying, that they have never heard. The witnesses ask, who can believe that God redeems the Jewish people by the new covenant with sin forgiveness of Jeremiah 31, that is delivered by the messenger Elijah, who receives it from the angel of the covenant, who is the angel of God's presence, the Holy Spirit, that alights upon the anointed one in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. Who can believe what we have heard? By the covenant of friendship that comes with his God's servant, David, a shepherd, whom he, <clears throat> when he sanctifies Israel by having the third temple built on his holy Mount Zion in or around Jerusalem. Not the Temple Mount. He says it's too small, and it's tainted by Islam, and it's controlled by Jordan. No Temple Mount issues. Just a very large tract of the land. <clears throat> who can believe what we have heard speaking to his prophet again as he spoke to Moses face to face and friend to friend and all by and with one man God calls my righteous servant that would be me Rambam says in chapter 12 of the laws concerning King Moshe that Moshiach will compel all of Israel to walk in the way of the Torah, perfect the entire world, motivating all the nations to serve God together. There will be neither famine nor war, neither envy nor competition. The entire world will be solely to know God and the Jews, therefore, be great sages and know the hidden matters with the understanding of their creator to the full extent of human potential. Well, that would be me. He's been with me 16 years now. He dictated this book to me. I'm also the prophet like Moses. Because that's what's unique about Moses. God dictated the book to him. This is still, this is Rambam. That, that that's the Messianic era. And none of that is in the Hebrew Bible. Not one word of it. He just made it up. Just like he made up two chapters in his Mishnah Torah that, that's called the Laws of King Moshe. You can't find one word of it in the Hebrew Bible. He just made it up. And he misinterprets things. He did a misinterpretation of, 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 of a couple of verses and came up with the idea that the entire world was going to speak Hebrew. Can you imagine? One third of this world is China. It's Asian people like this. Never going to happen. A world without competition? Never going to happen. That's just not how we're made. That's not how I'm made. Don't want anything to do with that. Everything he just said. But here's what God says. And see, the, the rabbis teach this, and they've been reckoned with and dismissed by God, and he has appointed me, Moshe, as the only teacher he recognizes. And what do I teach? I'm doing it right now. This book. And those rabbis who don't want to be dismissed before God and get in right standing with him, they're going to have to teach it to, to their followers. In particular, Tovia Singer and Jews for Judaism. 
They have convinced thousands of people that Isaiah 53 describes Israel. And it's not even close. Look at the videos on chapters 23 and 24. That's Tobia Singer in 23 and Jews for Judaism in 24. And again, God directs my words. And the way I deliver, sometimes with anger. They're, they're really uh, entertaining videos. They're in different parts. So this is what God says in the covenant of friendship, which completely refutes and is contrary to what we just heard Ram Bam say, and which is still taught today. God simply says he will send down the rain in its season. The trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and the land shall yield its produce. The Jewish people shall continue secure on their soil, on their own soil, and never be overthrown and dispersed again, uprooted again. There's a caveat to that. That's if the temple that he's, a, he's about to announce he's going to place among them gets built. If it doesn't get built, his purpose, which might prosper of Isaiah 53, that's in Malachi 3, the last page of the prophets, where he says, I'm sending my messenger before me to clear the way, and I shall return to my temple. And the angel of the covenant that you desire, that sin forgiveness of Jeremiah 31, is already on the way. And that will be explained in here. They shall no longer be a spoil to the nations. This doesn't sound like world exaltation that Jews for Judaism teaches. And I guess came from Rambam. World exaltation. But listen to the words of God. They'll be secure on their own soil. They won't be a spoil to the nations, the Gentiles. He will establish for them a planting of renown. They shall no more be carried off by famine. They shall not have to bear again the taunts of nations. Taunts. He will establish them and multiply them. He will place his sanctuary among them forever. And he calls it sometimes his eternal temple. His presence shall rest over them. And when he sanctify, and when his sanctuary abides among them forever, the nations, and that means Gentiles, will know that the Lord sanctifies Israel. That's God's messianic era. He's here. And he wants to live amongst his people again. And it's not because uh, they've done anything in particular. It's just y'all come back and I'll come back. And they came back in 1948. And that's basically when the day of the Lord began. I was born in 57. And he, he was with me at birth. But he didn't reveal himself to me until I was 50 years old. He orchestrated my life. He's, yeah, he orchestrated my life. To be a man of suffering, familiar with disease, suffering grievous injuries. Yeah, he takes full credit for <laughs> Shows me in vision how it is. And he's got my whole life in the palm of his hand. He can show me anything he wants to. He often, when I'm conversing with the angel of his presence, who's here too, um, in the presence of God, well, wherever God is, the angel of his presence is going to be there. And his presence is basically his mind. That's what goes to the temple. He surround, you know, the spirit and God surround the earth. Okay? But it's only their presence that goes into the temple. And this is the day of the Lord, and he's got to have a representation. There's only one description of a man to come, four righteous servants to come. Elijah, prophet like Moses, <clears throat> Moshe, and uh, the man described in Isaiah 53. One description that fits me, and I handle the duties of all four. 
I've already covered the prophet like Moses. He dictated the book to me. That's what's unique about Moses. God dictated the Torah to him. Uh, actually, two books. There's another book called The Life of God's Righteous Servant that he dictated. It's my life, but I didn't write it. I didn't write this book. And I couldn't possibly, just like Moses couldn't know the books, uh, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible of his own, I couldn't know this. You can't find a rabbi today or in the entirety of the history of Judaism that knows these things. In the proper explanation of 53, which is written so only the righteous servant can explain it. Nobody else could ever figure it out. But it's a teaching and it's a proof. First proof is this book and the information in it. Second proof is how I explain Isaiah 53. And third proof is my knowledge of heaven as Elijah. Because Elijah is the only man in the Hebrew Bible specifically taken to heaven. And he returns in the day of the Lord. So what do you ask him? Well, the proof is, hey, so you say you're Elijah. Tell us about heaven. And I have. Well, God has. He had me typed it. And he taught it to me. Who would believe? See on verse 1. Who would believe that one man fulfills and completes the remaining prophecies of God in the day of the Lord? Who can believe what we have heard? But these are the things they're hearing if they watch these videos. The remaining prophecies to be fulfilled is the delivery of two specific covenants and the arrivals of God's righteous servant who makes the many righteous, who is the anointed one, Moshe, the shepherd. God calls my servant David, Elijah, who was taken to heaven and returns and recounsels the members of the Jewish families, one to the other, through Judaism and righteousness. And the prophet like Moses, who wrote the Torah at the command and direction of God. The witnesses reported, and who would believe it? That they had not been told by their wise men, sages, rabbis, theologians, that God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53 is a Gentile. And that's supported by the Hebrew Bible. That's what that's who's describing 53 as Gentile, me. Now God's likely gonna have me convert in Jerusalem when we finally get there. But uh, he comes from Gentile lands, and of the people, none are with him. That's the Jewish people, his people. He's coming with the Gentiles. It's got to have a representation, or you don't know he's there. He covers the earth, but his presence is with me. Everywhere I go, he's within me. And any room I go into, he feels that his presence will fill that room. Of all the people sitting there, Listen to me speak. They will be surrounded by the presence of God and the presence of, of his angel, the Holy Spirit. He's an angel, a person, but his body is not human form and wings. It's the Spirit of God, and God is in his Spirit. When the Spirit alights upon you or me in chapter 11, verse 1, it may as well have said the Spirit of God and God lit upon him, you immediately can then hear his words as we learn in the book of Ezekiel. And you become a man in divine beings. Just like the man who wrestled with Jacob and God spoke through him and changed the name of Jacob to Israel. Okay, that uh, God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53 is a Gentile in the beginning. Of course, Jesus is a Jew. He can't be 53. Neither can Israel. All Jewish people gathered as one man. They can't be in 53. Uh oh. I 
Isaiah 53, oh, 63. Okay, this is God's writing. That was me just talking. I've learned all this. Isaiah 63, 6. God comes from Adam. That is interpreted in Judaism to be Christianity or Gentile lands. It means he is coming from a Christian country. And of the people, Jewish people, none are with him. He comes with a Gentile. Jesus was a Jewish man who came from Nazareth. The Jewish people did not come from a dump. Now we've talked about changing that. They came from Europe. They returned from Europe. That's Gentile language. Okay, that's got to be changed. <clears throat> they began in... Okay, don't read that. During the Exodus, uh, Moses and the uh, Israelites who had been slaves from Egypt were not allowed to pass through Adam. And it means God didn't pass through it because he was within Moses as he was in, within me. As I just explained. <laughs> Got some people working. I'm in a condominium and they're working on the wall. I guess it's on the way. No, he's going. That'll be too bad. That'll be too bad. What I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. That's part one. There's going to be a lot of parts.